First things first, let's get some bait. Our choice today, frozen shrimp and live shrimp. Always a good time visiting our friends at Angler's Bait and Tackle, a local bait and tackle shop here in Dania Beach. But let's get to the park and let's do some fishing. We just arrived at our spot. We put a few of our items down. However, we already see a few things that we are going to pick up and take back with us. We see some trash here. Uh, we wanna make sure that we leave our fishing spot cleaner than when we actually came here. And take a look at this. Somebody left a jig behind, so we're, we're going to take that back with us or possibly use that today. So here we have our stuff. Oh, looky here. We have some fishing line left behind. Looks like some braided fishing line. We're definitely going to make sure we bring this back with us and make sure we recycle it. We don't want an animal to get entangled in this fishing line. Hey everyone, we're back fishing Florida. We brought you to one of the many, many state parks that Florida has to offer. Today, we are here at Dr. Von D. Mazel, Eula Johnson State Park in Dania Beach, Florida. I'm Lisa Morris, IGFA's Youth Education Manager, and today we also have Joanna Olchik, IGFA's Youth Angling Instructor. So you have Miss Lisa and Miss Jojo today. So let's get ready, let's do some fishing, and let's try to catch some fish. All right, anglers. So the tackle that we're gonna use today, we've got our circle hook, a swivel, an egg weight, and we're also going to use leader. Now leader is heavier line than the fishing line that you ha already have on your fishing rod. The reason that we're gonna use an egg weight is because when the line goes through the egg weight, it can go up and down freely. It's not stopped like a split shot weight would be where you clamp it down and it stays put. A swivel, these little rings will actually rotate so that the leader attached on one side and our main line attached on the other side can move freely on the swivel. And of course our circle hook is one of the best hooks that you can use to catch a fish and it makes it super safe for the fish because they're more likely to get caught in the corner of their mouth versus accidentally swallowing the hook. So how we rig this, I'm going to take my fishing line, I'm going to take my egg weight and I'm going to run my fishing line through the egg weight. It's going to be loose and then I'm gonna tie on my swivel with the uni knot. The uni knot is one of my favorite knots. So the line goes into the eye of the swivel. I need to create a little loop with my tag end. And then I'm going to twist my tag end around my two lines, the one with the loop and the base of my lead line. I'm gonna do that about six times. Pull tight and then tighten the knot. I'm gonna do the same thing with my leader line. It goes on the other eye of the swivel. I'm gonna create a loop with my tag end, twist my tag end around my two little lines, pull that tight. Might need to use pliers, this line's a little slippery. There we go. Lastly, I'm gonna tie my hook on. So same knot, line goes through the eye of the hook. I'm gonna take my little tag in, make a loop, twist the lines together. I'm gonna do that about six times. 
And once again, I'm going to use my pliers to help me tighten it. Now something I want to make sure I do is I want to make sure I cut off the tag end. Fish do not like tag ends. If they get poked in the eye or the mouth with that nice little sharp little fishing line, they're not going to want to bite your hook. But make sure you do not let your tag end fishing line hit the ground because that'd be littering. So we want to make sure none of it hits the ground. I'm almost done. Got my last one. There we go. So here's my rig. Got my egg weight, my swivel, my leader, and my circle hook. Now I'm ready for my bait. So today, I'm gonna use natural bait. Natural bait is something that was once a lot. Now that could be a fish, squid, shrimp, or even something kind of weird like bread, corn, and cheese. Those are things that were once alive or came from something that was living. So I'm gonna use shrimp. And I've got frozen shrimp, and I've got live shrimp. And we're gonna see how many fish I can catch with that. So here, I have a frozen shrimp. Now my frozen shrimp has been thawed, so he is nice and flexible, and he's gonna be a lot easier to hook this way. But my big shrimp right here, he's a little too big for my little tiny circle hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to break him in little pieces. Now you could do this by hand, or you could do this with a knife. Just be very careful if you do that. So this way, I won't have a really big fish trying to bite a little tiny hook. I've got my circle hook, got the base of my tail. I'm gonna jab the tail with my little hook, push it out the other side, and now I'm ready to go fishing. All right, so here we have a live shrimp. Now, if you use live shrimp, a net is your friend. So make sure you have one. Because if you handle them by hand, you want to be careful of two of their horns. They have one between their eyes and one between their tail. These are both very sharp and they're for their defensive mechanism. So that way if something wants to eat them, they can kind of defend themselves just a little bit with those two horns. So be careful when you handle them. When you rig a live shrimp, one of the best ways is right between the tail, the base of the tail, or if you see that little tiny black dot right there, that's actually the shrimp's brain. You can hook it underneath the shrimp. You don't wanna go through it, but if you go underneath it, the shrimp can actually last several minutes. I'm gonna rig this guy between his tail. So I'm gonna hold him nice and firm so he doesn't jab me. I'm gonna take my circle hook right at the bottom of his tail, go right through, and then I'm gonna pop it out the other side of the tail. So this guy, you can see, he's still alive, he's still squirming. So when I let him in the water, he's gonna attract some fish and hopefully he'll attract me a mangrove snapper. That's my target fish for the day. If I'm lucky enough to catch one of those, I'll be a very happy little clam. So where I wanna target fishing is by structure. So here we have some red mangroves out there and red mangroves have really cool roots that help protect the fish and create a nursery for them. So there's a lot of fish in those mangroves. There's also a lot of structure directly beneath me. There's tons of limestone rocks that are beneath me, and I can see mangroves, pork fish, even sergeant majors under, underneath me. So these are two places I'm gonna try to aim to get my bait in to see if I can hook up on a fish. So I'm gonna hold my line, my pole, open my bail, bring the rod behind me, making sure nobody is there, and when I'm ready, I'm gonna cast out. And then of course, I'm gonna close my bail, now, I sit and wait. Here in Florida, we have two types of tides. High tide and low tide. And we actually have four of them. So two times it's high tide, two times it's low tide. Right now, we're approaching high tide. So if you look, the water's actually pretty high. Hence the name, high tide. If I were to come out here in about seven hours or so, the tide would start dropping and it would disappear. Now, when you go fishing, you want to fish in between the tides, between low to high or high to low. You don't really want to stay out fishing when it's slack tide, when it's right at the highest or right at the lowest, because that's when fish kind of relax more. They don't tend to bite as much. So right now, we're on the incoming tide, so the tide is getting higher. So we're hoping to catch a lot of fish today. 
So while Jojo goes fishing, let's talk a little bit more about Ms. L. Johnson State Park. It is a saltwater park and we brought our hydrometer today to test that. This will show us how, how much salinity is in the water. We'll test that in a second. But come to Ms. L. Johnson State Park. It is a beautiful saltwater park, has a lot of different fishing areas that you can go fishing. Today we chose the boat ramp because there's a lot of mangrove habit habitat behind us. Very good for fishing. But you can also fish from the rocks near the jetty. The jetty is no longer accessible. A hurricane did some damage a few years ago, so that's closed off. But you can fish on the rocks. Just be careful though. You can fish from shore or you can kayak along Whiskey Creek and do some fishing on a kayak. A lot of different things to do in Ms. L. Johnson State Park. Fishing is definitely one of them. Okay, now let's use that hydrometer and test how much salinity is in the water. So what we're going to do is take this hydrometer and carefully put it into the water. We're going to bring it out of the water, set it on a flat surface, and check out how much salinity is in there. So when we put this on a flat surface, we saw that the salinity is in between 31 and 32, about 31.5. That's pretty salty. Like we said before, this is a saltwater habitat and we just proved it with our hydrometer. Let's dive down into the underwater habitat that we have here at Ms. L. Johnson State Park at the boat ramp where we're fishing. Jojo explained a little bit before how there's nice bottom structure here where a lot of fish like to dive in and out and, and hide for shelter. Good place to go fishing. So along these rocks though, we actually see a, a, few, a few wildlife. We see oysters, we see a chitin, and we see some fish. The black and white striped ones are called Sergeant Majors. Oh no, we see some fishing line caught on this rock and through the oysters. Let's try to see if we can't get this fishing line out of the underwater habitat and recycle it like where it's supposed to be. There's a few things that we want to make sure that we stay safe while we're out here fishing. One is to make sure we have plenty of water. It is a really hot day today, very muggy, so we want to make sure we have plenty of water and we are hydrating throughout the whole entire day. Another thing is bug spray. There's a lot of vegetation, so we have bugs like mosquitoes and noceums that want to bite us, so make sure we have some bug spray to deter any of those pesky critters. And while we go fishing, we are using hooks. So we want to make sure we stay well away from the next angler, keep our six feet plus distance so that we don't hook that angler. And you always want to make sure you handle this hook properly so you don't hook yourself too. One more quick safety tip is make sure you have a personal flotation device and a whistle attached to it just in case of an emergency. We are out here on the water, so if you're going out here boating or kayaking or if you have young anglers, you want to make sure they stay safe, okay? And a personal flotation device is a great way to do that. So while Jojo goes fishing and tries to catch our first fish, let's talk about artificial baits. She already talked about natural baits, which are things that are alive or were once living. And if something is alive, we need all of the basic necessities like food, water, air, shelter, space, so that we can continue to, to thrive and grow. Artificial baits are things that are not alive. This jig right here, this feather jig, does have feathers on it, which came from a living organism, like a bird, but this whole lure was man-made or machine-made, not alive. So I got into our tackle box, and I'm going to use one of our feather jigs today. Natural baits, you just have to cast it out there 
sit and wait like Jojo did and she's just waiting trying to catch our first fish today. Artificial baits, you have to be the angler to make it move through the water so and entice a fish to want to bite your lure. So let's try that. We'll fish with natural baits today and artificials and see how we do. When you use a feather jig, you just want to make sure that you cast, reel it in, cast, and reel it in. So let's try it a few times. Got a fish. All right, let's see what I got. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Ooh, it looks like a, oh, it's a snapper. All right. Now this beauty, this is called a mangrove snapper. They have a very distinctive line that goes across their eye. And these guys love to be in the mangroves. Thus their name, mangrove snapper. Now, if you catch one of these guys, be very careful. They got their name Snapper because their jaw, they can close it really quick like you're snapping your fingers and they have teeth. So we want to be very careful around those teeth. So here's a perfect example of why you should use circle hooks. You see where my little Snapper got hooked? Right in the corner of the mouth. This is one of the easiest places to release a fish. Let's go ahead and measure our Snapper. So we're going to go from the tip of the mouth. Again, be careful about those teeth the bottom of the tail and this guy is about eight inches long so if I caught him today which I did I need to find out if I could take this fish home can I bring him home for dinner so here we have our saltwater regulations of Florida and here are my snappers so I know I caught a mangrove snapper but sometimes they're actually called a gray snapper too some fish have more than one name so it's very good to know your fish ID that way you're not mistaking a fish for something that you're not allowed to keep. Now we measured my snapper and he was only eight inches long. In order for me to keep a mangrove snapper, it has to be 10 inches or bigger. That means that my snapper was too small. So I'm gonna grab the line above the fish. I've got my D hooker. I'm going to hook the line with the D hooker. Spread my arms apart until the D-hooker and the hook meet. D-hooker goes up, fishing line goes down. And I give him a little wiggle, and there he goes. I caught a fish. All right, let's see what it is. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, look at that beauty. So this is a little lane snapper. Now you can tell it's a lane snapper because if you look down its side, it's got these yellow stripes that go down. They kind of look like lanes on a highway. And they also have a little black dot that looks like it's a little out of focus. Now, unfortunately, my lane snapper looks like it was a little too hungry because it swallowed my hook. Yes, sometimes even circle hooks can get swallowed by a fish. Now what you should never do is try to yank this hook out of the fish. It'll harm the fish. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut the line as close to the hook as possible and release the fish. And the fish can survive like that. Check out this green iguana. Take a closer look. You see the hook? As anglers, we want to make sure we don't catch any other animals besides fish. All right, scoot, scoot, scoot. So I caught myself a little lane snapper. Let's go measure it up. So from the tip of the jaw, the base of the tail, this guy is six inches long, about six and a quarter, but that's still too small to keep. These guys need to be about eight inches long, that's still a little small anyways, so we're going to let him go. So we had fun at Mazelle Johnson State Park today, caught a couple snappers, the natural baits won today compared to artificial, so that's a good thing for me at least. <laughs> now we're about to pack up. And I hope you guys visit other state parks, other parks in Florida, and explore fishing, explore the habitats, and see what you can find, see what you can catch. One last thing before we pack up is JoJo and I, we are going to clean up this area. We saw some trash, some water bottles, but more importantly, we are going to clean up all of the old fishing line. As we were fishing, we noticed there's a bunch of old fishing line on the ground. I actually got hung up on it a few times when I was walking. 
definitely unsafe for, for us anglers and also for any wildlife that comes walking around. So we're going to make sure we clean up our area, clean our fishing spot better than when we came here to, to start fishing. So until next time, when we go fishing Florida. Ah, much better.